shit, dat geklik van mijn toetsenbord kan natuurlijk echt niet. Ja, ik heb last van. Hey, we should be online right now, if, uh, if OBS works. We're online? We should be. I'm should be. It's not showing on uh, not YouTube showing yet. Not showing, dude. Oh, it works. Hey. All right, there we are. There we go. This is uh, another shot at doing a live stream in a different way. <laughs> I'm uh, the ghost caller. This is, uh, and on the other side, we have uh, the lively man, Jeroen. So welcome to the live stream, guys. And today we have a different setup like other times. We're a little bit more focused on starting off with talking. So uh, I think we have Jeroen on your left side and me on yep. your right side. Um, we have three topics today we're going to go through. And I have to say, if you're watching the video, below are the timestamps for all the topics we're talking about, so you can skip ahead in the video. Um, but first, welcome to the live stream, guys. And today, the three topics are, <coughs> uh, we're going to talk about the update we recently brought out. The second is what's going to happen next and what's happening right now, like this week, because Chinese New Year is very ne nearby. And if you've read the update, you know what that means. And finally, Jeroen is going to do a demo uh, or a showcase of Analog in, am I allowed to say the name? <laughs> yes, you are. Okay, uh, Zelda, Zelda Wind Waker in the emula emula in the GameCube yeah, emulator. So if somebody remembers, uh, I think it, it was like a month ago, I announced on stream that I tried to um, make the keyboard work in Dolphin. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Dolphin, but it's, uh, it's an open source emulator for GameCube and Wii games. Um, yeah, it seems to work really well, but we'll, uh, we'll show that later in the stream. Yep. Um, and okay, we have a third guy actually in this conversation as well. You might not see him, but he is there, Eric. So all three of us are here right now. And Eric will be um, assisting us with the chat uh, and technical things here. Uh, I don't know if he's gonna jump into the conversation sometimes, but you can't see him. So if you hear like a big, Wizard of Oz talking, you know who it is. Um, <laughs> I think he muted himself on the on screen. Oh, right. <laughs> um, okay, so let's see. That's where Eric is, uh, our acnid. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. So in the meanwhile, while we go through the topics, feel free to leave questions behind in the chat or um, any kind of comments in the chat, and we'll go through it. Uh, we'll pause through uh, throughout the stream to answer a couple things and uh, take a look. Uh, but let's start off with the last update. Um, the last update, as you might know, we posted, was it last Monday? I think it was last Monday, yeah. So in this update, we talked about what's happening. Well, let's say what was happening throughout the December month uh, up until that moment. And the most and the biggest thing is uh, what you could have read before was that we had these two issues uh, running around or lingering. It's a word we're using often. Mm -hmm. The first issue is the switch issue, uh, which we explain is about increasing the range of the switch. And the second issue is about the mechanical issue, uh, which <laughs> now I have to think about it. Eric says it all the time, midget Eric <laughs> in the video. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but um, um, uh, that some keys were not responding as they should be responding. They were rubbish as how Eric explained it. Um, and that was, um, uh, let's see, uh, those were the two issues that were lingering and where for, for which Jeroen went to uh, China and Taiwan to try to fix and solve uh, in the December month. And in that time, we really wanted to do mass reduction. This is, a, I post the, um, and I'll put it in the video description after stream, but that's the link to the blog about Jeroen being in China. Uh, with the best cover photo we've uh, oh, the best cover okay. photo yet yeah <laughs> uh, in either case uh, that was happening uh, ending November and December that time uh, Eric and I in ending November we were in uh, at DreamHack which is also a lot of fun um, and it was very exciting because uh, we wanted to do the production we wanted to do the production in December uh, because 
if we wanted to deliver in February, we had to do the production in December. And then came a moment there, we knew that we couldn't do it in December. So we're like, okay, if we do it in January and we fly it over instead of using boat, uh, we might be able to hit that February uh, delivery. But actually, I think at that time, we're actually a little bit too optimistic with that thought. Um, yeah, especially with the uh, Chinese New Year coming along as well. Yeah, and it's actually, yeah, and Chinese New Year is kind of a bigger thing than <laughs> uh, you would think. Uh, it's also a little bit different from, it's also a little bit different from, uh, you know, Christmas periods. Uh, because with Chinese New Year, it's not only that, uh, let me elaborate a little bit on that, Chinese New Year is when in China and Taiwan or in Asia, uh, or from, at least for the Chinese, uh, the new year starts and they have like a two to three weeks uh, vacation or holidays. But usually uh, this period is um, not just the two or the three weeks. Uh, also the factories, what they do is like this major cleanup before Chinese New Year. So there's like, you know, a couple of days before Chinese New Year starts even, there's like this major cleanup and they're already closed down production. And after Chinese New Year, very often they'll do some kind of like machine maintenance perhaps. But most mm -hmm. time they do it before, but it can also happen. Uh, right after so everything really closes down you can't get things through anymore and you really have to hurry up um but yeah. and everybody uh, thinks that way as well which is also an issue so it's, it's harder to get materials it's harder to ship everything because uh everybody tries to do everything either before or right after chinese new year and that is very scary if you're trying to reach some kind of deadline yeah. um and now that you're at the stream, we'll also tell you some a little bit more about what's happening in the back is that we also learned about, okay, uh, and it's funny, actually, you don't think about it beforehand, but the prices for stuff goes up <laughs> because all the raw materials, all the uh, all the raw materials and all the factories are running like, all the raw materials are being used, a lot of raw materials are being used and a lot of factories are running full time to meet the deadlines and to get done before that time and prices just go up. <laughs> uh, so we had, for example, that uh, we were talking about after we made the decision, OK, uh, because of this, we have to do the production after Chinese New Year. Uh, we ha we started buying components so we could get ready for the production. All the components we could already buy, we'd start buying it. Uh, all components that we knew that maybe we need to wait a little bit because, uh, because this mechanical issue we need to solve it, we waited a mm -hmm. bit. But one of the things that we could already buy was like packaging, for example. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, uh, maybe you can share your own that <laughs> all of a sudden we're on the line with our project manager about packaging. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he just casually mentions that the price of the packaging has gone up by like 30%. I think oh, it was. I think, no, I, I would Even swear more? like 50% on top of it. That was yeah. like general packaging price went up. Mm -hmm. And then another, like, I think 100% if you would 100% higher than the original price. Yeah, yeah but he mentioned that it was. Um, a problem which is China wide, as in everybody in China have to, has the same problem because um, some sort of monopoly position by some companies who refuse to deliver paper or or <laughs> something. Uh, yeah, the factories which makes it um, like a national problem, which uh, causes a shortage of paper, so increase in prices. Which is crazy. Um, uh, yeah. From um, so you had what what you just explained. You have this. Uh, raw material monopoly in China with uh, the packaging. So when you, so that's not like the bo who makes the box, but who delivers the material for the factory that makes the box. Yeah. Um, and then you have also that um, China decided to be a little bit more, let's say, how do you say that? Strict. Uh, with strict. their uh, environmental policies, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was also an influence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and because of that strictness. Um, prices went up because uh, apparently a lot of these factories would also have some kind of like uh, under the table deals with the local uh, governments that they could, you know, <laughs> surpass some uh, environmental rules that were in place. So uh, that was a very interesting development as well. Yeah, we have uh, a question uh, jumping into this topic by Manson. Do you have to order plastics and search yourself and have them delivered to the factories? Or do they just bill you for their orders? So um, we don't order anything ourselves, pretty much. Uh, so they order us for us, and they just—it's just part of the um, of the price we get. Yeah. So we kind of uh, 
when the moment we order uh, when we order the material the, or the things we want and they start placing orders you know if there's they quote us a price for the boxes for example yeah. and all of a sudden they start buying it and they find out oh damn it you know our prices just went up like so much uh, we can't use the same quote anymore so in that way it influences everybody yeah so it's not that we order them themselves but we do get an update on the on the price of the materials themselves so okay let's see uh, so that uh, comes down to yeah the update that we um, um, oh we came to a point where okay Jeroen came back and we made the decision we're going to do production after Chinese New Year and we planned a new trial production now if you're a little bit familiar with what we were doing that uh, a trial production means you do like a really small batch production of maybe 10 or 20 keyboards uh, where uh, you test the mass production process uh, and it's very important because if there's some kind of mistake in the keyboard or in the materials that is a moment you'll find out whoa you know there it's there uh, because when you do it you know when you find out mass production you're gonna have so much default keyboards like broken keyboards that you can't use and that's a very high expense yeah. so we planned a new trial production um, um, and that trial production is actually going to happen in this week uh, but the idea of the trial production was that we would one have a deadline for the switch manufacturer and coming a little bit back on the on the switch in a second and number two is that we could test and see if whatever solution we have for the mechanical problem actually solves the mechanical problem because we have to produce a couple more keyboards to know if it's gone really gone or not uh, so uh, let's start off with the mechanical issue because that's an easy topic right now we uh, we found well. You can share about what the mechanical about the mechanical issue, maybe you. Yeah. So they did some um, debugging in the in the factory about the mechanical issue, and what they found out is that it's not within the. Um, so at first we thought it was like um, maybe a bottom case issue or a top plate issue, and we and them did some testing, just trying to isolate the problem. So just swapping only the bottom plate of a keyboard or swapping only the uh, circuit board of a keyboard or the top plate and try to figure out like uh, try to identify where the problem is and what we found out that was mostly the the circuit board itself and what we what they think right now is that the circuit board is put into the bottom case and it can sort of slightly reposition itself and there are sort of um, pretty difficult to explain but there's holes in the PCB where it sort of fits within the bottom case and they made those holes smaller so there's less variation uh, in between the different keyboards so it's like more strict or more tight in its position so that should mm -hmm. allow for less variance within the within the yeah the placement of the circuit board within the bottom case so and I have to mention that you're talking about millimeters like less than millimeters yeah. difference it's, uh, it's very small yeah um we uh Elder behind you <laughs> oh whoa <laughs> <There's my tea. laughs> thank you thank you Annie. uh so we i talked a little bit about the mechanical issue in this blog post it's a little bit it basically talks about um how the tolerances of a lot of different components can come together yeah. and change things and it also talks a bit about the switch and how making the switch uh, get more range also makes it more sensitive so the second so with this new trial production we have this new circuit board and everything that you just explained and hopefully it will be gone so the second hopefully, thing is yeah. or well, what was the first thing but it's a switch uh problem so I think in the update we explained already that the manufacturer had a prototype version and when Yoon came by um, that prototype version was really it was really good yeah good yeah I mean, they was... showed me the prototype version there and I remember they he well he the project manager promised us that they will make a mass production version which will be exactly the same uh, performance wise and they will get it done end of December if I remember correctly um, yeah they said that we'd be done before January yeah yeah so now we're about two weeks into January and they're 
they were running into some issues again and as you might have known it's pretty hard for us to get an insight into what issues they run into so it's also impossible for us to tell like um so what exactly is happening we're uh, kind of in a position where we just have to wait until they give us a new version and just hoping yeah. that they continue working on it and improving it i mean they, they mentioned that they, they say that they're improving it which they are i hope uh but I anyway mean, well, we we <clears throat> we always check on uh what the status is and yeah. it's very very hard to extract accurate information from them because they're kind of hiding the real issues sometimes mm -hmm. to make you feel like there's no problem everything's going smooth <laughs> uh yeah. we, we personally till the deadline don't... hits yeah yeah till the deadline hits uh, we don't like that style, obviously. Uh, we would rather hear exactly what the big problem is and worry about it than mm -hmm. <laughs> not know about it because it's just not helping uh, both camps, in my opinion. Uh, yeah. But the last update about it was also about how they, how the Switch version have right now, the mass production version, is just just slightly not up to par as the prototype version. Uh, it has a slight... Uh, spike analog and the, the range is not to exactly as far as the one from the prototype so uh, that's kind of the last update we got from them and we just know that they will not finish that final mass production switch uh, for the trial production which we have this week yep. so I have to say this is kind of still the um, scary part because it's totally out of our control the only thing we can do is check check things, put pressure on it, mm -hmm. and say, okay, this is not good enough. You have to go back to the table. And yeah, one of the reasons, yeah. I remember a month ago, we decided on, um, just right when I came back, so it's half December, we decided that we wanted to do another trial production around this time. And the reason for that is exactly what, what is happening right now, because if something happens, which it did, then there's a deadline they can, uh, they can work towards. On to, towards, yeah. Yeah. So there's like a strict line. Even I mean, if we didn't have, uh, if we didn't set a trial production deadline, then it would just only extend Even some more. sort of mass production date, which was not clear at all. Yeah. So by setting this trial production deadline, we at least, um, yeah, set a date for something. And I think it did help because um, I remember uh, Friday when we talked to them, they they were working very hard on get trying to get something done before the trial production date. So, um, yeah, we'll see what happens next week. Yeah, it's going to be exciting, uh, to say the least. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, then I think that is the point we are at right now. Uh, so we have the trial production coming up. The switch is kind of like a question mark if they're how fast they will be. Uh, there are very clear deadlines and pressure for it. And the mechanical issue, we'll know for sure if it's gone or not after the next trial production. And honestly, even if it's still there to a certain extent, I don't know if we can if it can get any better because that is just the nature of the of how it works, basically. Um, but as long as the default the rate, the amount of keyboards that are not up to our expectations is lower than what it was before, that's already a major victory. Uh, okay, so let's see. Uh, I saw that Manson uh, mentioned something in between. I'm a little bit late with this one. Yeah, I'm always looking into your soul, by the way. <laughs> uh, okay, do you know how fast they could potentially spit out the bulk order once they begin? Days, weeks, on the quote that is, things happen. I'm not 100% sure how to interpret the question, but I'll split it up in two ways. Whenever, now before Chinese New Year, whenever Ch Chinese New Year, whenever we get a quotation, and uh, especially for uh, packaging in this case, the quotation would only hold for like two days because it was changing so fast. Yeah. And as far as uh, mass production goes, uh, mass production, because this is the first time to do this kind of keyboard mass production and there are quite some steps we have to do for the first time, it's slower than what usually would be and it can take up till two weeks and it could be done faster but just to uh, take it realistically. It, what, the production you know, itself or the delivery of the, the supplies, let's say, 
Well, they're both about. Oh uh, no, weeks, the but... the production, the production yeah. and delivery of supplies uh, depends on what component you're talking about. Some will take a month, some will take a week, and others will take two weeks. Basically, how fast would the main pre-order production of the keyboards take at their end before you can start putting them into boxes? Wait, what? Um. Okay, so that would be assembling the keyboards, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, like I said, uh, there's this process before, which is ordering all the components, and then you have the actual mass production. So the ordering before uh, depends on what components you want to order. If you're talking about the chips or uh, smaller components in the PCBA, there's a chance it can take up to one, maybe two months uh, before you have what you need. Uh, but if you talk about the bottom case and the top plate, which has to be produced at the spot, uh, that will take, honestly, I'm not sure how long that will take, but I think they need to order at least three weeks ahead. Uh, yeah, I think it's that. about three weeks, yeah. Yeah. That's what they normally do before uh, preparing for a mass production. So. Yeah, and then if you're talking about packaging, packaging is quite fast. I think they do that within like uh, a week after they already deliver whatever you ordered. But uh, that's why we did all the ordering of the components already beforehand, so we don't have yeah. any delays with ordering any any of the components. Yeah, the only components which uh, are left are luckily also involved with a mechanical issue, and also they they can be delivered pretty fast. I mean, the things which are slow, which are some special components which are not going to be changed anymore, there um, we already have them. So, yeah. or they already have them, of course. And I think it's quite frustrating, actually, the idea of you start your production and it finishes and, you know, the keyboard is done and that needs to be delivered. And the whole yeah. delivery part also takes time. <laughs> like, uh, I think once it finishes, there's like a couple of days that go over getting it to Hong Kong. And then from Hong Kong, it needs, well, in this case, we're doing air shipment. Honestly, I don't know how long air shipment will take uh, considering the, uh, our package, uh, you know, these kind of air shipments if, will usually take about a week, I think, but maybe this will take a week and a half. I'm not sure. It really depends. Uh, it really depends. We have to experience it ourselves first. Uh, but we do know that like a boat shipment, for example, takes like 40 to 45 days. And then we're talking about it arriving at the fulfillment center. And the same for air shipment. And then from the yep. fulfillment center, it needs to be shipped to you, which can have, depending on where, uh, depending if US or uh, yep. Europe can take like one till, I guess, five days or something. Yes. Hey, Working Kaffee days. Bayer, assuming he's from uh, US, since he normally cannot see us live, so. Oh, right. <laughs> we finally have a US friendly, well, friendly, it's early in the morning, right? Uh, U.S. right now, I yeah, think. Yeah, like minus uh, eight compared to here. Uh, well, depends uh, on where you are, of course. East or west. I see Washington. Washington right now is twenty minutes past eight. Uh, oh, I'm wrong. Sorry, what, it's uh, half past two in okay. Washington. And I have to update. Oh. Six hours behind. I guess it's double for New York or something. New York, what? New York is also in the east. Oh coast. no, it's the same. Oh yeah, uh, New West York coast and Washington are right next to each other. Colin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay. I know you're normally on like the eastern part of the world, so uh, it's a little <laughs> confusing. But... It is a little bit confusing. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, okay. I think like California is four or five hours, four or five hours less than. Um, okay, let's see. So that is, oh, I guess, <laughs> that would be the He's situation. In England, he's probably just lazy. Right <laughs> Oh, cop fire! Yeah, I'm just lazy. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that is. Let me check here. Let me see if I missed anything here. Uh, I guess that was everything of what is the situation right now. Um, yeah, yeah. That's everything. That's that's this whole situation right now. And I know if you have uh, questions or you're curious about something, don't don't be afraid to ask anything you want. Uh, that's why we're also doing the live stream, uh, sharing a little bit more details and answer any kind of questions also. 
And in the meanwhile, I don't know. In the meanwhile, you, I don't know if you need some time also to prepare Zelda. Yep. Uh, to at least uh, uh, get it running, and uh, we'll jump to that one uh, later. Oh yeah, there's also Washington versus what? Yeah, there's Washington State versus Washington D.C., which are opposite ends of the country. Yeah. Oh, it's so confusing, man. <laughs> Okay, so. Was that all like, we had to talk about today? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, that's kind of about the update. Uh, the rest yeah, is. Next, and yeah, next, next time will be way more exciting. Hopefully, with the trial <laughs> production keyboard. After trial production, yeah. Yeah, 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 in two weeks. Yeah, that'll be good. Maybe you can uh, share something what happened to you earlier this week. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh. so, so, for some of you who might be wondering, like, why is Calder not in Taiwan again? Because he uh, he should have been back by now, right? And um, and the answer is he should have been, but, but uh, he's been not. Back. I should have been back in Taiwan. But uh, to put it very plain, I missed my flight. <laughs> that's 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 the that's it. I just missed my flight. It's really stupid. Also, I. Um, Let's see. I was at the airport already for a very long time, and we're just, I'm there with my family, and we're just uh, preparing a bit for going. And we go through uh, the security, goes fast, and we're just in the, what's it, the after the check in area, and everything's just fine. And then all of a sudden, we're like, okay, I know it's about time to board the airplane. So we're at the gate, and all of a sudden, the gate says, gate is closing now. <laughs> and we're like, what? <laughs> Um, so I go to security there and then I realize, oh my God, uh, the time that I had in my head was the flight time, uh, when the flight was leaving and not the boarding time. So I was literally looking at the airplane in front of me and, uh, the lady just wouldn't let us in anymore. And we're getting out our back. You your suitcase out, right? They're, yeah. yeah, they're at that moment taking suitcases out of the airplane. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my God. Uh, so that was the most, that was really frustrating. Yeah. I, I was so, it was also so, so surreal to feel that because uh, uh, it's just so weird. It's so, so weird to, yeah. to Remember during that. summer when I was a day late at the airport <laughs> in Taiwan? Oh, in Taiwan, yeah, yeah. But it's that, I had the same thing, you know, in your head you're like, okay, this day, that time, this day, that time, this day, yeah, that yeah. time. And I, you had the same, but you had the day later. Uh, I had, I had the same, but I had the, the wrong time. <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah. You just uh, so fixated on it. Yeah, yeah. It's insane how when you just read into something and you're just a hundred percent sure that it's around that time or that date, and you don't even bother to check anymore if it's uh, actually true. <laughs> The worst part is like oh. everybody before that time is asking like, oh, so when you're leaving, oh, when are you going again? And you say yeah. that time and date all the time. And yeah. yeah, I thought I had to leave home at six, but the flight left at six. Yeah, I heard that happen plenty of times as well. <laughs> you just have this this time in your head. And yeah, and you don't bother to double check or something anymore. Like, and even worse, even if you double check on yeah, the ticket, you, you you're do so check, but you don't... Yeah, 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 you just... <laughs> Maybe you just scan over the time, like. Uh, I I remember like I looked at the, I looked at the I don't know if I looked at the ticket. I look at my itinerary and I just see the time and I'm like, yeah, okay, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's not the boarding time that's on your no. itinerary. No. Um. So uh, yeah, it's anyway. So that was uh, annoying. So now I'm leaving at the end of the month instead. Um. And it's not, it's not a biggie. It just really sucks for, like, what the day after we rescheduled the ticket. You're allowed to reschedule a ticket and pay a small fine uh, to rebook your ticket. Now, the rebooking only costs, like, 75 euros per person, so that's quite fine. But you also need to pay the difference of the ticket price uh, of your old one and the new one. And if I would fly anywhere in this month, it would cost me an additional, like, 600 euro per person. Mm -hmm. I was like... Well, hell no. <laughs> uh, we're not going to do that. Well, was it uh, per person as well? Yeah, it's also per person. Yeah, uh, Yenny told me afterwards. I thought, oh, I it, thought was, it was yeah, in total. Yeah, I thought oh, so too, but yeah. oh my God. Yeah. Um, so, uh, 
we booked it after Chinese New Year. The reason why it's so expensive also is because of Chinese New Year happening and everybody flying, especially uh, towards Taiwan or China. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so we booked it on like uh, the end of the month, which is kind of like right after or in the middle of Chinese New Year. Well, you're not, you're not the only one, Calder. We have uh, Arachnid. Yeah, to yeah, you thought he had to leave home at four, but Flife left at four, and Low Tech missed his bus as well. Uh, so uh, I'm not alone. I'm not the only one. Thank you, guys. Yeah, <laughs> I got only a lot of advice bit... from other people yeah. about it. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, only missing a bus is uh, yeah, not as bad as missing your flight to the other side of the world. Oh, okay. It's uh, it's Quinn. Oh, it's Quinn. Yeah, I was going to say I Quinn. Know, I was oh. like, I have the same image as Quinn. Um, I'm literally perfection. Um, uh, uh, I hate it when... Anyway, you'll never do it again. That's uh, what a wise person told me. You'll never do it again. But it I... will happen again. It will... <laughs> no. It will happen again. You'll feel even more stupid because it happened <laughs> twice. Uh yeah. Okay, uh, so let's jump into Zelda. Yeah, let's. I'll boot it up. There we go. I'm quite. I'm quite curious about. It. I haven't seen it myself yet, so I'm quite curious. Yoon will be. Uh, Yoon will, will be they, playing they... Uh, Zelda. Uh, was it Wind Waker? Talker. What is it? Wind Waker. Yeah. So Yoon is going to play Zelda Wind Waker with a wooden one, and he's playing it on an. Uh, GameCube emulation software called Dolphin, was it? Yeah, but something happened. Maybe I can fix this thing. Now, unfortunately, there we go. now I'm the Wizard of Oz at the moment. Unfortunately. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can put your cam. No, it's okay. What's the audio like? Is it very loud? Because it feels loud for me. I'm not able. To... Oh, wait, let me check for you. Yeah, you can put the audio a little bit softer, a little bit down. It's quite loud, yeah. Is this better? Let me check. I don't know, did you? Hey, we have more people jumping in. There's some delay here, so. Okay. Yeah, I uh, tune it down a bit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why is nothing happening? Why was I clicking on the OBS overlay? Okay, here we go. So this is... For those okay, of you familiar with this game, down, yeah. this is right at the start, so I just skipped the, skip the outro. The hey, Dr. Bag. Dr. Bag PhD, just during the stream. So... You just missed everything about the update. I'm the Wizard of Oz at the moment. Jeroen is playing. Uh, so I have to say that unfortunately you don't see the keyboard. Uh, yeah, that's uh, something we thought of like way later. Okay. Anyway, um, so yeah, this is Zelda with the Dolphin emulator, and what it can do. I don't know if you can actually hear it, but ooh, I can slowly walk. <laughs> but there are some things which are very uh, curious. Well. Well, I, I was playing around, preparing this game for the stream, and uh, as some of you might know, you have the ability with the with the wounding keyboard to change your sensitivity for your um, for your analog keys. And what happens with, with Zelda is that if you look at um, because it is. Uh, so what's basically what I'm playing right now is a keyboard which is pretending like it's an Xbox controller within the emulator which is normally controlled by a GameCube controller so there's some some weird stuff happening for example if I walk forward very slowly I walk forward very slowly and then I go sideways very slowly as well then we'll go full speed so there are these weird things happening which I I'm not sure why, why that happens normally, because uh, on a GameCube controller, of course you can just push your joystick to the top left or top right or whatever. Um, 
So that that's that's kind of strange. And another thing which I notice is while adjusting the curve is that um, that uh, if you look at the joystick normally that it starts very late and then there's only a very small window um, where you can walk slowly and then you immediately go full speed so I really had to readjust the curve a lot to get like a normal to get like a, to translate it into like a good feeling for the wooden keyboard so that will that also uh, shows us that we really need to work on getting something which is pretty intuitive and also uh, which you can change fast so when you try to play a game like this which has sort of like these crazy uh, these crazy controls and especially like with this sort of double emulation that um, the, all these layers in between that you really need to be able to customize your keyboard so you can get the best experience within this game I have, <laughs> I have to mention in between that <clears throat> uh, Jasper, uh, I have to, just some context here, Jasper, uh, we, uh, he, in, in the chat right now, mm -hmm. uh, he says, uh, that's what he says, but he didn't do with my demo. Now the context there is that Jasper oh. made a analog demo for us uh, not too long ago. Uh, with uh, with Unity, I believe it is, uh -huh. so we can easily bring it with us and show people some analog without you know fiddling around with games and having any problems, and you just being able to show it everywhere. Mm -hmm. And he's like, "So you're changing yeah. all these analog curves in Zelda, but you're not oh, changing yeah, it in my yeah. demo." <laughs> oh, so sorry. I was just so excited to be able to play Zelda on the on the keyboard because uh, I've never played. The Wind Waker when I was younger because I didn't have a GameCube. I did have a Nintendo 64, so I did play a lot of Ocarina of Time and Heroes Mask. But I just love the the whole style of the Wind Waker. And what's also funny or special about the Wind Waker is that, um, well, this is only special for like people who like Zelda. But anyway, normally you wake up as a Link in all Zelda games and you have like these green clothing. But now you wake up in this game and your sister is next to you, which is also pretty special for Zelda. And you wear these blue orange clothes but now i think this is your grandma she gives you your familiar green suit wow <laughs> <laughs> i'm fun totally fact, not fun fact. person so <laughs> just wow <laughs> yeah, yeah. so you might think that so who is this guy what is actually link the hero of the story oh they also mentioned it you only have to wear them for one day, so don't look so down. That's what she says. But... One day only? Yeah. <laughs> but then I think it's nice that um, it's recognized straight away. I, I guess yeah. that it's also that Dolphin, the emulator itself, recognizes Xbox controllers or X input. Yeah, I'll show you the, the setup for the controls later because they did it really, really well. They have a very advanced. Uh, control uh, control setup and what um, the dolphin emulator itself is also really well done it's also um, they also have a blog because it's an open source project as well and they have a very active blog where they write a lot on and the whole project just is really well managed as well it's um, a very good example of a, of a very successful open source project so I remember something like you can sort of roll oh no it's later Cop maybe. fire made a very uh, Cop Vampire made us very, very smart <clears throat> notice here. He's writing down all the facts for the next quiz. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Keep your eyes and ears open, my friend. <laughs> you never know what will happen in the next wooding quiz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did everybody receive their, um, their prices, by the way? Oh, shit, I didn't even read what she said. I had to go to let Carol. Me, Who's Carol? Let me give some context here about the winning quiz. In our previous stream, or our NDR stream, was it? Yeah, all three of us were on the stream. And uh, we did a uh, small quiz. And everybody that participated with the quiz, uh, or I think at least top 11 people did, or 13, almost everybody, because some of them didn't finish the quiz. But uh, everybody that participated in the quiz uh, received a small gift of a small gift from us and the number one the winner of the quiz uh got a whole goodie bag of stuff from us well a goodie bag's a bit overstatement but 
um, as as far as we've sent goodie bags at all, it's definitely a goodie bag. So I, I, was, I really enjoyed that that stream. I have to say. Yeah. Yeah, I love the style and uh, you <laughs> skills with the sword. I love the whole style of this um, of this game, and there was a lot of um, I don't remember what is the word again. So people, were, a lot of people were complaining about how, I mean, Ocarina of Time and especially Majora's Mask were pretty dark games, and they had like dark dungeons and ghosts and stuff. And then you have this game, which is just very bright, uh, fun characters, fun music. And uh, a lot of people were not very happy, but I just love what they did. And it also, what you can see is that it held up its time pretty well. It's still, I mean, it does look great, of course, but because it's, because of the style itself, it still uh, looks pretty good. And the new Zelda, oh wait, what do I need to do? Oh, only press B, I just didn't walk. I really like this comment of, uh... Uh, our last number one winner from the quiz, yeah, yeah. Fizzle, and said, "Did someone say quiz?" <laughs> Man, he he was fast. He was good. He answered. Was it everything? Like one mistake, I think only. He was fast. That's yeah, yeah, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So Noisen mentioned that they were. He, he was so turned off by the dress exchange and style. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can imagine that. I mean, it was such a huge, huge difference. Especially with, uh, I don't know if you play Mirror's Mask in between, but that game was very dark. Uh, L target. Yeah. Did you see that all the trailers for the new um, new Switch color? Trailer of the new Switch? Oh, the Nintendo Switch, right. I always have another Switch in my mind. I I didn't see the trailers, but I saw uh, influencers going to the oh, wait, Nintendo wait, event wait. in New York. Uh, wait, what am I doing wrong? Oh, I'm pressing A. What? Uh. But from what I from what I understand from the Nintendo Switch, it's really um, it's another party console, and it's party con console. Is that how I say? It? I guess. Yeah. Which is really cool, um, as in play with others. It's the most fun, also in a con what you can have on a console, I in my out. opinion. I don't understand. You're such a Zelda noob, Jeroen. <laughs> but in either case, uh, okay. Yeah, I, but uh, the only I'm thing. a little bit like I haven't gone all the way through all the specs and what you get for, like, what you, if you just buy it. I understood kind of that there were some. Mm -hmm. Uh, cons like limited memory, and you could just a lot of cons. So, so I watched the presentation earlier this week, and at first I was very excited because of how it looked. But then you start like thinking about all the um, all these weird things that come through the Switch. For example, the the games at the release date are just so. There's only a couple of big games, and the one the first of them is called One Two Switch. Which is basically just Wii Sports. I don't know if you remember that game. <laughs> yeah, I do. But the Switch oh. version, and, and you have to pay for it as well. I, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I rem if I remember correctly, I, I got the Wii on release date and I got Wii Sports for free. So that's, that's fucking dumb. And also, the other game, the big game, is Zelda Breath of the Wild, which is basically just a Wii U game. So that's also kind of stupid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that's a fraud and a Mario game, right? Yeah, but that that one is uh, is only coming uh, in the holiday season, two thousand seventeen. So it'll from, be a while. From what I understood, like the Wii U release had the same issue, right? Yeah, it had no games at launch. Yeah, and it did it, it never it never gained traction. Uh, so where are we gonna? It's really stupid if you if you really think about it, it's so stupid because the, the whole point of a console, like the whole race in a console, are the games most of the time. Even though there is no other, well, I guess you could say that mobile phone games are the competitors for uh, the Wii uh, Wii Switch or any kind of mobile gaming. It's like getting close to it. Console gaming, yeah, you could say so, but I think PlayStation, Xbox play in a different feel than 
um, Wii U does. They they separated themselves uh, yeah. in a way. Um, yeah, I mean, with Switch. Wii itself, they actually had something new and special because. Uh, what did you say? Uh, yeah, we introduced like a whole new market, which is really well. But the mobile market really played into that market as well. Yeah. Um, I need to interrupt this topic for a little bit because we have some questions here. Yeah, go for it. We have from Cop Vampire. Um, would there be an API to the keyboard? And if so, what language? Where's that question? Oh, I totally missed the question. Um... What would you like to see in an API? So, we're thinking about doing something um, like API for RGB, but we're not sure like how that will look like yet. Um, and as for the whole analog thing, that's something we're just not sure yet about how we implement it. So, what we would like to do is release something. Um, which, de which developers can use, so they can use like the full capabilities of the of an analog keyboard within a game, and yeah, like Lone Tech said, gaming and talking. Uh, <laughs> yeah, gaming and talking is pretty hard, um, but it, it, it does require a command so for HID, and yeah, I'm just not sure about uh, like how we're gonna. How it's gonna look like but we are gonna make some sort of api where you can either send your own rgb commands but also uh dolphin just crashed okay <laughs> oh oops okay well it gives you some time to talk because i wasn't wasn't paying attention to either the you game can... or the talking anyway it's pretty elaborate it's pretty on... hard to talk and, and game at the same time i know right <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's... Because you're trying to think like I want to. You're trying to read like what what the woman is saying uh, where to go, and now you yeah. should imagine those guys doing the speed run. That guy doing the speed run and talking. Yeah, they're just about... talking. Uh, yeah. Oh, and they uh, elaborate on okay. the okay. RGB. Back to yeah. the, so RGB API is basically just HID commands. So that's pretty easy uh, to implement. Uh, it's only like like how we will give it to the de developers themselves. Um, as for another aspect of the story is the analog control. So what we have right now is um, you can send a command to the keyboard to get like the full analog values, but it's not recognized as some sort of standard by either Windows, Linux, or whatever. So um, to for developers to be able to use that, they have to customize something right now. But in the future, we may want to make like our own maybe plugins for unity for example or um yeah other game engines but we're not 100 percent sure about how like what route we will take to to uh for that but the, the current plan is to um get the keywords out first and then we have some time to work on developing that as well because we just don't have the time for it right now to to get all that done we just don't have the resources so i mean we, we wish we could do like uh, release it with like plugins and blah blah blah. Let's put the put it in another perspective. Um, as you know, we're we free guys, and basically, the guy that can do the mo most uh, uh, most well or near almost all the coding is Jeroen, and um, Eric, on some parts, assists assists on a couple of things, but mm -hmm. not hundred percent coding wise. Um, and then we have this uh, before where when we're making all the basics uh we have we had a freelancer working with us to speed up the process which is really great uh, but that's kind of where it stops so we always have to choose like okay what is Jeroen going to work on <laughs> are we going to put our focus on this that or this and i think if you look at the total budget the total amount we raised uh, we're very conservative with it uh, up yep. till the point that we really have the keyboard out there because if we start spending and investing a lot right now in development by getting external uh, help, so hiring other people to help develop and make it, uh, it's going to burn through our money faster and you just don't know what's going to happen, you know, and we didn't raise that much that we could afford to do that just mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. So... Um, yeah. Scary part, Lone Tech says, scary part, Chrome has raw HD support from JavaScript. What is scary 
about that. I don't. Chrome has raw HID support from JavaScript. That you would be able to just control access the keyboard use. from the browser, or I guess. I think we a long time ago we talked about how you could control the keyboard over your web browser. Uh, yeah. And and there is there is something very exciting we're going to share in about two weeks. <laughs> yeah, but there's a difference. Um, Alone tech, there's there's of course a difference between being able to send some generic commands or reprogram the keyboards because uh, actually accessing the bootloader is uh, is a different story. Uh, let me do some quick questions in between here. We have a question from Grimman asking if we've talked to any developers yet. Now, we have talked with different game developers, as in how would they, uh, how they usually implement uh, Xbox controls or any controls in their game, and see how we can, um, um, how's that Su supplement that way? How would we say this? Because we're thinking about making our own driver for the keyboard, we want to take a look at how do they do it right now and see how we can make it easy for developers to start using it. So uh, right now, there, it's very, very hard, extremely hard, to convince any game developer to you know make specific adjustments for our yeah. keyboard because there's just 1,000 people in the world using our keyboard. <laughs> uh, so it's um, so that's will take a bit longer. And uh, what what Eric is saying, Jasper is our main game developer. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's true because he he made a little small he made his little analog demo, which I would love to show uh, as soon uh, as it's working as expected. It's almost done, and it's pretty cool because that we can easily bring it with us to uh, to demo it at different places without having to like download a game or prepare a game or anything like that. Uh, okay, and another question. Will the keycaps be made out of PBT or ABS? From uh, it's a question from Yeritans. Now the keycaps are made from ABS, uh, and it's a really long story about why it's not PBT. But the gist of it is that if you want to have good backlight keycaps, you we have to go ABS and PBT. You cannot get it in PBT. It's either going to be very expensive to make our own. And if we don't make our own, it's going to be extremely ugly because the fonts and uh, molds that are available on the market are just totally, utterly ugly. So uh, let's see if there was another question. Quick one. Uh, there were some more. Let's see. Or are we Eric jump? already. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this one is also interesting. Um, can certain keys... By Luke Aids, can certain keys be emulated while others are not, and both be used at the same time? Um, I'm assuming he's referring to uh, oh, the right. Xbox controller settings, yeah. or I'm almost for sure he's talking about having the, the keyboard working while using it as an Xbox controller, for example. Right. Yeah. So um, we can jump into that with uh, I can show you the configuration of Dolphin. And maybe um, so you can get a bit more insight about, uh, about how the keyboard is working and how you can use it to um, uh, you can set it up for for the game because uh, I actually use a combination of normal and uh, analog keys in Dolphin as well. Uh, let me see if I can get this up. And meanwhile, let me share that the keyboard basically has two modes. Uh, one is analog mode. One is digital mode. And as you might know, digital mode, it works just like a regular mechanical keyboard. And in analog mode, it uh, it works as an analog keyboard, which means that it can work as a Xbox controller, which is the X input, or as a gamepad. Um, show the settings. And in analog mode, you can also use it as a keyboard at the same time. So you're not limited to just either one of the two. Ah, here we go. Okay, so this is, okay, I hope you can read it. I'll just try to make it big so it's uh, sort of clear to see. So what you can see here is um, the Dolphin configuration stream, screen. And does it capture my mouse? No, it doesn't. Let me enable the mouse. 
There we go. So what you can see is um, uh, the mapping of the of the gamepad, and so A, B, X, and Y are mapped to my mouse, but the Z key, for example, is just mapped to R. So I can just click it, press R, and it's just mapped to like a regular R. But the up, down, left, and right, so the left joystick are mapped to um, to X input, so our analog control because our keyboard is basically a, an X input device and what you can do in Dolphin is you can just select the gamepad and then press detect and press the key and then you can just add this to your key binding so you can make a combination of uh, X input keys so analog keys basically and normal keys so the C stick for example is mapped to I, J, K, L uh, D-pad is mapped here so um, so you have the main stick which is just analog oh, so you can see working uh, uh, yeah it changed the uh, changed a lot of settings in the utility but this is the analog stick and these are all just digital keys so, so you can see they're working together at the same time I don't know if we oh what's that threshold is that the Threshold is that the. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Uh, oh, I saw threshold there. I was thinking maybe that's dead zone or something like that. In the settings? Yeah. Uh, threshold? Yeah, well, it's in the left bottom, but it, it's okay. Oh, yeah, that's just for the keys. So no, I don't know what it means. I didn't jump into the settings, but uh, I mean, basically. Uh, yeah, it's possible to set a combination and for example we do the same in overwatch where we only map uh the left joystick to wasd and the rest are just normal keys so you don't even need to change any of the other key bindings and there are some games where that's not possible but uh so for example rocket Maybe. league um makes it more difficult for you because uh, you cannot assign your own buttons if i remember correctly so you're basically just stuck with your x input mapping and your normal keyboard mapping so they might influence each other if you use them at the same time yeah though i remember when i set up this uh these controls for rocket league and no did we show rocket league yeah we showed it yeah, yeah i made i made some videos about it actually but mm -hmm. uh, we haven't posted those um in rocket league i turned off the keyboard only used xbox control mm -hmm. uh, because otherwise uh, you it would jump to the keyboard controls once you reach the uh, activation point of the keyboard. Mm -hmm. And there's no way to unmap or change anything in Rockley itself, indeed. So, yeah. and yeah, then, you're then you're just stuck with the um, Xbox controller uh, settings, so then you need to set up your own profile within the utility yep. itself. Yeah. Yep. And an alternative is that you lower down the activation point as far as possible, but mm -hmm. I think that would still limit you to a certain extent. Uh, yeah, kind of. It kind of have to see what happens with the new switch, how that feels. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. it's kind of right now. It's quite switch dependent. It's possible to do it, but it's very switch dependent right now this new switch we're waiting for so yeah we have a question from Grimmin the driver you develop is it something that could be easily added to the epic or unity engine yeah if we uh, develop something ourselves we'll make sure there are plugins available for unity and well unity at least because um, it is the biggest like uh, indie gamer uh, community so we're assuming that if anybody wants to try out uh, using our keyboard it will be in that community uh, but yeah, if uh, Epic has their own plugin system as well, I'm not 100% sure how that works, but we'll probably develop something like that as well. Makes me think. Yeah, it was also one of the biggest things we found out yeah, when we were talking to game devs. Oh. Hello? Uh, hello? Still yeah, here? Yeah, camera's frozen. Uh oh. 
need to dial yourself in again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys don't want to know how we got this set up. Yerun at the moment is uh, didn't have a webcam, so he's using his phone right now. And well, let's just leave it at that. <laughs> this yeah, is uh, entirely what... done for Skype. Yeah. Um, see what happens here. But like you know, every time we do live stream, we do something like set it up right at moment. There's no standard yet, so. Okay, let's see. There is another question. When did you last do Rocket League? I think there is a stream with a little bit of Rocket League, but that one wasn't too great. Um, and right now we're working on, um, well, I'm starting to work on this week on making video clips of different games using analog with the uh, prototype switch that we have. So we'll be releasing some clips uh, using analog in different games. Um, I don't know know when yet. Just kind of mm -hmm. have to see how it is because I made the clips before, but we were, uh, or at least I was not too happy about it. So, yeah, we'll see. Uh, but it's coming. Um, then we have. Da -da. Will you support very niche keyboard layouts like Colmac or Dovrak? I'm using Colmac and usually getting blank PBT keycaps anyway. I if now you can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, you you can change. Very simply put, you what you cannot do, I believe, at this moment is on the keyboard say that it forces your PC to use Colmac or Dovrak. But if you change to Colmac or Dovrak on your PC, it would just accept it as an input because it's controlled by the PC in the end anyway. I think the only difference is that if the keyboard will tell the PC, hey, I'm uh, by standard a Colmac or I'm a, a by standard Dovrak layout. I think that's yeah. the only difference. Yeah. So right now, the keyboard doesn't tell the PC, hey, I'm Colmac or hey, I'm Dovrak. You still have to change it on the PC itself to say, hey, I'm. it's a Colmac yeah. or hey, it's a Dovrak keyboard. Uh, but it would just work anyway, so. Uh, let's see. Move the keycaps around, change to Colmac. Yeah, and I mean, if we look at keycaps-wise for Colmac and Dovrak layout, we don't have the extra keycaps for it. It does make me feel interested about supplying extra keycaps, but it's uh, not, not but possible at the moment. But would it require... Um, I was talking about the font, yeah. But does it... Um... Like I imagine the different keys are also mapped over different layers or rows, let's yeah. say. So you're not, you, you cannot just use the same keycaps. No, you really need new keycaps for different rows. Yeah. Unless you're, uh, yeah, unless you start, unless you make a flat keyboard <laughs> and just have flat keycaps. Yeah. That would be the easiest thing in the world because then you can swap around whatever you want. It doesn't matter which row. Yep. Uh, let's see. Yeah, from up. That's true. Font. Typical. Okay, there's still okay. The chat is talking about the Colmac Dovrak, so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not a question between. <laughs> uh, okay, so I think like we just so we covered the we covered the update. Uh, we covered what's happening this week uh, and what's coming next. We did Zelda Wind Waker uh, analog uh, in the Dolphin emulator, and that was everything of the stream actually. So yep. right now we're kind of open to questions. I kind of in my I kind of planned uh, this would take hour to one hour and a half, so we still have some time left. So if you have questions right now, uh, you're welcome to ask, and we can go into it. Uh, in the meanwhile. Uh, what was I thinking about? Oh, yeah. Um, you and I, we should, oh, when we have the trial production, we'll send out another update about we're going to do the trial production for everybody that's not watching the live stream. I'm sorry, what? Oh, once we know when the trial production is the date uh, this mm -hmm. week, um, and we know what's going to happen then we'll share an update about that the trial production is going to happen and everything yeah, we kind sure. of shared in the beginning of the video yeah yeah of course <clears> we're <throat> going to do another stream in two weeks and um hopefully we'll have some more news by then and 
if we have some proper news, let's say we can uh, release an update as well. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of what you can. I mean, if you're watching the stream right now, the update we're going to bring out uh, this week will not be very, very interesting if you watch the beginning of this video. Uh, but after the trial production, that would be after this week, uh, it's going to be very exciting for the both of us because that's when it will be very telling. So look forward for, to that update. Uh, so then we'll know if the mechanical problem is gone. Okay, so we have a question here. Uh, what is your favorite games that benefit you the most playing with the analog keyboard? Who? Now I have to be very honest that my gameplay, my <laughs> me playing games in the last two years or so, really like went with a slope down. The, I think of the three of us who plays the most games right now is Eric. Yeah, I already I, responded in the chat. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so there's your answer, Dishonored 2. Because personally, I still, right now I'm playing mostly either, if I play, I play Overwatch. Um, what else have I been doing lately? I'm really looking forward to play more Civilization. Uh, you don't really need analog for it. So, and that's kind of where it stops for me. I kind of limited my amount of game gaming. I don't really have a lot of time left for it anymore either. Um, Trackmania, that's another answer from Eric. Have you guys tried Splinter Cell before? Is the game still running or? <laughs> yeah, I I, actually, I downloaded Splinter Cell, uh, but it's on my PC in Taiwan. What, they have a new Splinter Cell? No, it's no, it's an old one. Terrible. It's an old one. Uh, exactly, because we got this question before, uh, and I think it was in the list also, and I started downloading it, and uh, I just haven't had the time to start it up or install and start it up because this was before I went to uh, Holland. So, and I, I guess like uh, you could see like the the games I'm playing right now. Like I'm now starting to play games to try out, test, and see uh, how it will feel for some different games. Some of them are for you guys because you asked for it. Others are uh, because uh, we have them uh, at hand um, for the videos coming up. Uh, but I don't really consider them a fair evaluation because I'm not too immersed into the game. Oh, I do have to say, I made a video of uh, Super Hot uh, not too long ago. Um, we never posted that video. <laughs> uh, there is going to be a video uh, with Analog and Super Hot, and that game was really, really awesome with Analog. Uh, I have to say, for, of all the games that I've been doing Analog with, Super Hot was by far uh, the most awesome to use it in, yeah. And I, I'm I'm not really much I'm not much of a race game guy or a flight simulator or simulator guy. So uh, I would only imagine. I mean, I've done Rocket League, and in Rocket League it works. Uh, you do notice it. You can use it, but it doesn't take away the fact that Rocket League is still very high paced, and you don't use it as precise and as slowly as you would do in, for example, Super Hot. And I don't know how it is in other race games per se. I think we tried also Grid for a while, but Grid is so slippery in itself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it doesn't work that well. Yeah, you don't really. Yeah, it's not Grid is not about like having control <laughs> over your car, right? Oh yeah, well, that's smart. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, it's really weird control. Uh, grid, it's totally different. Um. Oh, and Binding of Isaac, we've done it as well. I do have to say with Binding of Isaac, it's sometimes a bit tricky because you have to start up the game while the keyboard is actively seen as a controller. I don't know. Yeah, so basically, what I think what happens with Binding of Isaac is that the first action you do is what it uses. So oh, if, right. you press, uh, if you press a controller button, then it will just use a controller for the rest of the game. But if you press a keyboard button first, then the controller is just overridden for some reason. I don't know it why. Just actively switch in between. Uh, and then we have, have you tried to play any FPS game while aiming with the arrow keys? Uh, I've tried it in Overwatch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Using the right arrow keys as a right analog stick. And, um, you know, it really sucks if you're a console player. I like <laughs> if you're playing. Only thing I could think of, oh my god, it's so terrible <laughs> if you have to play it with a controller, yeah. these kind of games with a controller. 
that's all I could think. It's uh, I would not recommend it. <laughs> uh, but you can do it though. Let's see. Have you guys tried the wooding yet with Rainbow Six Siege? I think uh, I would be entirely super addicted to Rainbow Six Siege. Only reason I'm not playing it is because uh, if I'm in Taiwan, uh, playing online it would be only on Asia servers and I can't play it with anybody here. <laughs> Otherwise, the, the latency is too terrible and I know I'll just become a bit addicted to it, so I just avoid it. Maybe, did you play it, Elon? No. Not at all. I think uh, Eric mentioned Rainbow Six somewhere in the chat, but I don't know if you played Rainbow Six Seeds. Uh, uh oh, is the camera going to get switched because Eric left the chat? Uh, no, it looks alright still. I don't okay. know if it is. But, uh, but I would like to try Rainbow wait. Six Siege though. Yeah, it's sort of, wait. Okay. Then we have another okay. one. Have you? Camera screwed up. The camera screwed up, but I was yeah. afraid of that. Oh, that's okay that the bar is on the top. <laughs> okay, just, let's okay. just leave it like this uh, before we ruin it more. Uh, have you guys tried the uh, wooding? Uh, no. Uh, have you tested Microsoft games such as Forza Horizon 3? I played a lot. I can't wait to play it on the wooding. Forza Horizon 3, that's a good one, actually. I was already wondering what kind of racing simulator would be good to do. Yeah, put it on the list. Yeah, put it on the list. Oh, if you don't know, actually, in the description below, we also have a, a Google form where you can leave down, where you can note the game you would like us to try with the winning one. Um, and we might show it in the live stream, <clears throat> one of the next live streams. Uh... And I'm just going to fill in the form right now to note it. <laughs> Four is out horizon free. Oh, you did request it on the list there. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I request okay. it also now. Okay, uh, okay. So next week, uh, like Caller said, we will have some time. Uh, we will actually bring my PC to the office. And we'll have Caller playing games nonstop. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Best yeah. Of the world! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> So how was your work Finally. today, Calder? Yeah. Oh, it was tough, man. It was so tough. A lot of stuff to do. <laughs> People to kill. Oh, God. to save. <laughs> Since my childhood, I was waiting for this moment. That's how we started <laughs> rooting. So we could play games at the yeah. office. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm kind of, I'm looking forward to it. But at the same time, at the same time, I know it's going to be kind of bitching because, uh, you're not playing for fun, really. You're playing to test, note, show, record. Make videos. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if you have games, put it in the form that's in the description below, down below. Uh, because then I'll be down. I'm, I'm. Well, I shouldn't say that, but I'll be testing <laughs> a lot of different <laughs> games. <laughs> I'll be I'll testing be a lot of different games, games this week. So, and the next. Come in the coming two weeks, I should say. Uh, so that, and I think I saw it from Manson mentioning it also. That's what we have the beta testers for. That's super true uh, for testing the games, and everything. We do have the beta testers, and unfortunately, we don't have any keyboards at the beta testers yet because of the whole mechanical issue. We just have a couple of keyboards that we are uh, very usable. And hopefully, after this next trial production, we can start sending it out to the beta testers. Um, not with the latest, latest switch, but at least it will be a good functioning keyboard. So then stuff will go really fast. <laughs> a little bit more patience. Yep. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. Sending prototypes. I think um, I think you're going to appreciate it when we send uh, the next trial production keyboard because you really get the feel of the keyboard also. And uh, we have something else we'll be sharing in two weeks. That will be pretty cool. I'm really looking forward to sharing that over in two weeks. I'm being such a tease about it, but <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> yeah, we cannot say anything about it. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm also putting a lot of pressure now on a couple of people. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> a 
that's why we'll i'm saying your games yeah. next week i'll work on the other things again okay <laughs> um okay so if there is any final final <laughs> questions or comments uh you're welcome to share it right now otherwise we're closing down the stream in about three minutes i think then it's 20 minutes past nine um, and I do have to say, thank you, thank you guys uh, for joining the stream. Uh, I hope you guys like the format of the stream. Uh, do leave some feedback behind how you think we can improve it. Maybe it's also very nice that uh, if there are some, you know, maybe there are talking topics you want to talk about. It can be keyboard news or it can be gaming news. You're welcome to pitch in um, anything. Uh, because we would love to talk about different things also that are happening. And um, other than that... Uh, format, good pacing. Yeah, I think this one was a bit more, a bit less um, spread out like before. Yeah. yeah it, the only thing which need a bit more pre preparation is the, the game itself. Yeah, but... Yeah, because I wanted to like run to a dungeon and show some uh, interesting footage, but didn't get to it but also i guess kind of um two things is like one is the the webcam and i think we like the hot fix we have for the webcam right now is pretty good uh the second is that for showing gameplay we really need to find a better way of showing gameplay i think the you're we're missing the second webcam showing the keyboard right now but uh we really need to find a good format for showing gameplay i'm not sure yet what the best would be Mm. Yeah, maybe we should just have one of us playing and the other one talking. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. Though. Oh, we need, yeah, we need, yeah, one guy should be playing, yeah. And somebody else should be like guiding and talking through it like it's a tech yeah. demo. <laughs> that's better. We should try that, yeah. yeah I think that's a good idea. We try, we'll try that with the next next one. Yeah, maybe, uh, yeah, you should just play through it like one time, especially all you want to see. And, um, and then just uh, having, and then you can just play it without thinking about it, just like uh, Hearthstone streamers would do. Oh. No, isn't it with those tech demos? Uh, the guy that's playing is like, he has to be. He's literally like an actor because he has to <laughs> go through a certain. Uh, he has to follow a certain path, look at things, you know. Like there's like this big monster coming out of a, a corner, and then he has to switch the camera there and then go back and, <laughs> and then shoot somebody very accurately and yeah train you that's that shooting way. a drama movie yeah uh, here color yeah well that's how they do it at tech hours though <laughs> that's true that's true uh okay in either uh, case music in the background epic music playing yeah, yeah building up building up to the intense moment oh i think uh i'm wondering though do you think if there's some kind of background music, if that will be nice, that'd be a nice one. Question. Maybe, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Okay, either case. Uh, <laughs> I, I have one more minor point of criticism by Manson. You all really need to put on edge filtering on the wooding logo at the top. Do you even Photoshop? <laughs> Eric, what the. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see. There is here. That sounds pretty promising. There's a also final question. Would you rather fight 100 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? Whoa. <laughs> I I would rather fight one horse-sized duck because it's easier to bring down one bigger thing than 100 small things. Do you know how big a horse is though? Like an actual like. The horse the police ride on in Holland. Yeah, okay, that's true. I mean, it's scary. It will... It's really scary. But I mean, imagine one hundred ducks. Uh, duck size? No, one hundred horses running towards you. I have you. a pretty sick karate kick, man. I can just kick all of them. <laughs> yeah, right. It's just spin around. You got a roundhouse. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Uh, the guy calling it with the roundhouse kick, the cowboy. Oh, oh I forgot. I don't know. I don't remember. I just know the the, the whole episode of Family Guy. Roundhouse. <laughs> Roundhouse. 
Uh, we have Who leaves the curtains open at night? Well, well, why not? I I live on like, I live on eighth floor, so it's not like people can look in, see what I'm doing. Ah, oh, Chuck Norris. Yeah, yeah, it's Chuck Norris. Uh, was it? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> we have another question here. Can the activation point be lowered beyond how far the key can actually be pressed? Answer is no. That's. That's weird, that, though, right? Why is that weird? Because uh, because it's an optical it's an optical switch, so there's a lens. So let, let's say this is the bottom plate, and there's a lens moving down, and as soon as it reaches the bottom, the lens cannot go any lower. So there's not more light. What can be reflected? No. Oh, so yeah, but that's why it's a little bit weird if you can lower it further down. Oh yeah. Well. Um, let's say you have something which actually measures the force. Then no it would be, yeah, that's true. Yeah. But it doesn't measure the force, unfortunately. I guess, unfortunately. <laughs> um, okay, I think, let's see if there is a final question here. Do, do, do. Oh, I think that's it. So, uh, in that case, if you're watching the video, I don't think there's any. No. Uh, yeah. Then I have to say, uh, then we're going to close down the stream. Yeah, uh, we have another stream coming in two weeks again. Every two yep. weeks we have a stream. Uh, thank you so much for joining the stream. If you've missed parts of the stream, uh, I think it takes like half a day or something. Or right now it's rendering, but it will be. You can rewatch this stream on YouTube, um, and we have a playlist with all our live streams. You can just watch it back. Uh, give us like a couple of days to timestamp the video. It takes a little while before we uh, have the time to do it. Uh, but then you can click the timestamps for the different topics we talked about in the, vi in the video. Um, and so we oh, do, uh, two last questions. Well, depends. They're very, they're very short. The light okay. that measures the analog is it visible if we turn off the RGB LEDs? Answer is no because it's infrared light. Ever had problems with dust on the sensor? No because um. Uh, the switch and the uh, infrared lights and sensors are in very enclosed space. So that was great. That, right? uh, that was a great <laughs> <pitch>. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> There's another one for you, Rune. <laughs> Can the activation point be turned off? I don't know what. Then that, you cannot what press the key anymore. I yeah, you it? could if you. You can turn off digital keyboard. I like digital keys. You can turn it off. Then there's no activation point. There's no keyboard. My room is spot clean. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, to go back that, yeah. to the finishing part is uh, see you guys in the next update and otherwise also in two weeks and feedback, game requests, leave it in the Discord, uh, leave it in the Google form below. Google form below. And if you, have like any, there, do you, have... if you want to talk with us or talk with others of Wooding or you have questions you want answers to very fast. Uh, you can join our Discord, which is also in the link below. And otherwise, see you guys in the next live stream. Yes, two weeks. Thanks. Bye-bye.